Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. I'd like to welcome all of you to the celebration of the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there and who are in people who are in fatherly roles. You can even say happy Father's Day to me right now. Very good, I heard that. Anyway, as we gather to celebrate our fathers and we celebrate and worship the Father of all fathers, let's bring to our Heavenly Father, uh, along with our fathers, whether living or deceased, all the prayers of our hearts. There's so many needs, so many things we need to pray for. Uh, we bring them all to the Lord. You know, we want to pray especially, you know, for uh, uh, putting to rest of any racial discrimination that's going on right now and that all men and women on earth can see each other as equal brothers and sisters, equally made in the image likeness of God, and that uh, violence will come to an end and, and that the coronavirus will continue to subside down to nothing and that we can get through this time together. And uh, for those who have struggled financially, uh, lost things financially, that God would help them, that the Father would richly provide for them and for all of us. And so along with those intentions and, and uh, the intentions that, uh, that you hold right now uh, in the depths of your hearts, uh, my intentions for this Mass um, are for, first of all, Holy Cross Parish family, then for Phil Masteller, Jack Martins, John Uber, Glenn Goobles, Chuck Condon, Vernus Parrott, and Bob Olson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are eternally begotten of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are God from God, light from light. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now join with angels and saints in praising our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you, I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come, But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. 
Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure most of us, maybe not the younger generation, but most of us at one time or another have seen Cecil B. DeMille's classic movie, The Ten Commandments. It's really, it's uh, like number eight most grossing uh, sales in, in the whole history of movies. It's a very popular movie. And what, what was your favorite part in it? I, I know for me, the most moving part in the Ten Commandments was when Moses was on Mount Sinai and these, the, the stones were before him and this wonderful, you know, you know, power and, and fire and etching uh, of the Ten Commandments into the stones was coming. And you hear the Lord saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have any strange gods before me. Commandment number two, you know. I remember when the commandments were being etched. And I was just a little kid. I remember exactly where I was sitting. I remember my eyes were just riveted on the screen, on the TV screen. And I felt this stirring, how great God is. How wonderful and awesome our God is. As a little kid, I felt even more attached, I think, to God the Father. My image of God was just this awesome very warm and loving and yet incredibly, totally powerful being. Um, and and that, was, that was really uh, furthered when I watched that movie. God, so awesome. God dwells in unapproachable light. God can barely be fathomed by the human mind. God is so totally other in many ways and so holy that, that the Jewish people, you couldn't even say his name because his name was so holy. That would be taking his name in vain. But this is the good news that I have to share with you today. All the while, God maintains that complete, infinite awesomeness. While maintaining that, God says, I love you. And he loves, he's not just this powerful God that spreads the waters, but he's a God who intimately loves us. And in fact, Jesus says, I want you to call him Abba, Daddy, Papa. I want you to have an intimate relationship with the Father. So I want to ask you a question right now. Do you know right now, off the top of your head, <laughs> how many hairs are on the top of your head. Some probably know it off the top of your head more than others, if you know what I'm talking about. Some of you can only have to count a few hairs. Other people have a full head of hair. Do you know how many hairs are on your head right now? Do you know? Can you tell me the number? Think about all the, the, the billions of people. Think about all the people. God knows how many hairs are on each one of our heads. And if one falls out, he subtracts it, and he knows. He knows how many black hairs we still have on our head, um, or, and how many white hairs we have on our head. God is that intimately involved with every cell in our body, everything we are, and he's sustaining the very inner core, our very soul in him, we live and move and have our being. He knows the hairs on your head. This is why Jesus says three times in several verses, in, in that short gospel today, three times, do not be afraid. Fear no one. Do not be afraid. Jesus wants to make it very clear that we can be secure with our Father. Another passage, he says, do not live in fear, little flock. 
for it has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. And he says, look, at, here's two sparrows. They're sold in market for next to nothing. Yet not one of those sparrows drops without your Father's knowledge of it. And how much more valuable are you than a whole flock of sparrows? We are, we're not just God's property. We're not just something he created. We're someone. We're God's sons and daughters who call him Abba, Father, all the while realizing it's the same God that went, I am the Lord your God. Ooh, goosebumps, goosebumps. In the first reading, we read, I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side. Have you been hearing the whispering of many? COVID-19, oh, it's up here. This is a hot spot. This is, oh, when are we ever going to get over this? Oh, think about all the violence in the streets, all the racial discrimination. There's a lot of bad stuff going on right now. You know, financially, how are you doing? Are you keeping your business? Are, you know, people are worried about a lot of things. You know, and there's a lot of reasons to be upset, to be honest with you. There's a lot of reasons. And yet Jesus calls us to 100% trust in God the Father. When we turn to the Father in faith and trust, it invites his presence into our life to do the impossible. This is a beautiful prayer. I'm going to pray it, then I'm going to have you repeat it at home. Father, I trust in you because you are all-powerful. Father, I trust in you because you are all-knowing and all-wise. Father, I trust in you because you are all-loving. But most of all, Father, I trust in you because you are my Abba and my Father. Therefore, thy will be be done. I'm going to put this on Facebook, by the way. So uh, later on, you can go and find it. I'm just going to put this prayer written form on Facebook. But pray this after me at home right now. Everybody, follow this. Ready? Father, I trust in you because you are all powerful. Father, I trust in you because you are all-knowing and all-wise. Father, I trust in you because you are all-loving. But most of all, Father, I trust in you because you are my Abba and my Father. Therefore, Thy will be done. Beautiful prayer. Pray that often. I was just talking to a good friend of mine last night. I consider her kind of my, my you know, I have a spiritual director, and she's kind of my spiritual directress for many years, like about 30 years. I consider her my spiritual mother, really, in many ways. And she was saying last night, isn't it interesting, Father? that, you know, in the midst of all of this stuff, don't you feel the peace of Christ? I said, yeah, I do. Don't you feel a certain unshakable steadiness within you? I said, yeah, I do. It's amazing what God's grace can do for those who trust him. I said, yeah. It's not like a, I haven't felt shaken, by the way. Can I just tell you? I have felt very shaken a few times in this period. I have not always been Mr. I just feel all this great, blissful peace and trust. No, trust has to be worked on. And when you start to go off into that negative direction, listening to the whisperings, terror on every side, when, when you start to go in that direction, you just to focus and say, Father, I trust in you. Don't be afraid of anything or anyone. Now, I want to point out one more really important part in the gospel of the day. Because undergirding all of this, don't be afraid to acknowledge your God individually, personally, privately, in your family, and out in the wider community. Do not be afraid to acknowledge the Lord. Don't be afraid to acknowledge who Jesus is to you every day. I remember as a little kid getting hit between the eyes with this passage. I remember hearing it, you know. 
Um, let's, let's go to it. He says, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. And I just had this vision of, of Jesus saying, I know you. Hey, Father, this is Dave. Remember Dave? Oh, we just loved him so much. He, 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 loved, he loved me. He acknowledged me before men. Come on in. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. I couldn't think of anything worse than Jesus saying, I don't know you. I don't know you. You didn't acknowledge me before others. So I cannot acknowledge you to the Father and all the angels and saints in heaven. So I'm going to give you a task today, all right? This is some, Sunday, it's the Lord's Day. Um, even though you're dispensed from communion, you're not dispensed from making it a, a day of prayer. You're not dispensed from that. We, Sunday is a day of rest and prayer. Your task you know, instead, you know, instead of going out all the time acknowledging Jesus publicly, you know where that starts? When you acknowledge Jesus personally and privately. When your acknowledgement of Jesus in, in personal private prayer is strong, you have the courage and the fortitude to go out and say, yes, I know Jesus. He's my Lord and my God. You're not afraid to acknowledge Jesus. So I want you to do it. Actually, I'm going to give you a little prayer. You can read the trust prayer online, but I'm going to give you this one. You can memorize this one. St. Francis of Assisi spent about 70 to 80 percent of his time in his hermitage. And sometimes late at night, he'd be there kneeling, and he could be heard by the other brothers all night saying one thing over and over again, my God and my all. My God and my all. He had his eyes focused on Jesus, acknowledged him, him, who he is. You are my God and my all. That's your task today. Find your prayer spot, and just for maybe 15 minutes or so, just look at Jesus and say, my God and my all. And finally, I do want to promise my continued prayers, and you know all you fathers out there have our, our continued prayers for you, all those who are fathers, all those who are in a father, fathering mold and, and role, I want to wish you a happy and blessed Father's Day. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen knowing that at all times we are in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bring to the Lord our prayers. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he continue to grow in holiness and wisdom in his service to the living and true God. We pray to the Lord. For civic leaders and those in authority, may the Lord provide his grace for the peaceful resolution of conflicts in the world. We pray to the Lord. For people throughout the world who are persecuted for their faith, may God's love give them courage as they stand firm on the foundation of Christ in the darkness. We pray to the Lord. For all fathers and those who love with the heart of a father as we celebrate Father's Day, may they draw strength and blessing from our Father in heaven and be shining examples of his love to all. 
we pray to the Lord. For all members of our faith community, may we boldly acknowledge God and proclaim him everywhere by our loving actions. We pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may they live in the eternal gift of heaven with God forever. We pray to the Lord. For all the prayers we hold in the depths of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we thank and praise you so much. You are all powerful, you are all wise and knowing, and you are all loving. Therefore, thy will be done through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one, by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, as with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord. At this time, we make a spiritual communion. Jesus, we believe that you are truly here, and that these aren't virtual graces going out into the homes, but actual graces from this actual Mass. Jesus, we accept you into our heart. We acknowledge you before men and women. 
We accept you into our heart. We give our heart back to you. Through our loving union with you, Jesus, bring us into union with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, into the beautiful embrace of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember in your prayers the happy repose of the souls of John Bowden, George Semple, and Maxine Meese, who passed away this week. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. I'd like to, uh, just especially for those who don't have internet and are out there in 88.1 radio, by the way, we are so grateful for 88. Point one radio uh, that uh, really uh, gets us out there in, in, all over the place. Um, so thanks for that ministry that you give to us to bring the Mass to the whole area. But those who don't have internet and those who uh, can't even get the, the bulletin on internet, I'm going to read this. This is very important. First of all, I want to talk about visiting tabernacles opening churches for that private prayer, which will be on June 23rd. Bishop Walker Nicholas has authorized the opening of certain churches for private prayer. Holy Cross Parish will open our churches for private prayer starting on June 23rd. St. Michael Church will be open on Tuesdays, which is a regular day of adoration, by the way, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Blessed Sacrament will be open on Thursdays from 9 a.m to 10 a.m., which of course is still the same uh, adoration time over there as well, and then the evening, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Up to 10 people wearing masks may gather. Social distancing guidelines must be followed. Now, as to the opening of public masses, beginning on June 27th. Holy Cross will be celebrating public weekend masses beginning on Saturday, June 27th. And the, follow, the following Masses will be celebrated. 4.30 p.m. Mass on Saturdays at St. Michael Church. 9 a.m. Mass on Sundays at St. Michael Church. Also is live streamed on Facebook and also on 88.1 radio. 10 o'clock a.m. Mass on Sundays will be celebrated at Blessed Sacrament Church. If these Masses fill up, we have to still see how many people sign up and come. A lot of people are still intimidated, and a lot of the elderly people are really encouraged to wait a while. But if these masses fill up, the following will be added. 7.30 a.m. Sunday Mass at Blessed Sacrament Church and 11 a.m. on Sunday Mass at St. Michael Church. That's if we um, need the space for that. The protocols for returning to Mass have been mailed. So even those, those who are at 88.1 only, they have been mailed to you. They've been emailed and are located on our website under the coronavirus response page. If you would like a hard copy of these, please call the parish office at 712-277-2949. It's our, been our number forever. Please keep in mind the following. You will be required to register to attend Mass. Registration will be open on the Holy Cross website starting on Monday, June 22nd at 10 a.m. If you do not have access to the internet, please call the parish office at 712-277-2949. Masks are required for ages 2 and above. You are encouraged to bring your own mask as we have a limited number of masks available. Please have your mask on prior to entering the church. There will be limited access to restrooms. We may just designate one. 
you are encouraged to use the restroom before you come to Mass. Act as if you're almost on a pilgrimage and on a bus tour. There will be no air conditioning during the Mass, although right up to the Mass. We will do our best to cool the buildings before Mass, and we will open the windows and doors if necessary. Holy Cross will do everything we can to prevent the spread of the virus, but we cannot be 100% sure that you are safe. I think that's kind of obvious, but it's important to know. Lastly, I want to reiterate what, the, what Bishop Nicholas released last month. All the faithful are to be reminded that the obligation to attend Sunday Mass is still dispensed through the end of the year. The elderly and the more vulnerable, high-risk parishioners should be reminded that because of this, it is not a mortal sin to miss Sunday Mass, even though it is being offered, and that it is preferable that they remain at home at this time. And actually, I have one addition that I want to give to all that. Um, this is not in the bulletin, but note well that for both the private prayer coming up and the upcoming Masses, the only entrances at Blessed Sacrament and St. Michael that are going to be open will be the front entrances. So there's two doors at Blessed Sacrament, front entrance, two doors here, uh, front entrance, those are the only doors. Uh, we, uh, we're having really hard time finding ushers, and, and we need the doors that are being used to be very well covered, uh, completely uh, uh, taken care of and attended to. So only the two front doors at Blessed Sacrament, two front doors at St. Michael, will be open for any of these activities that are going on. Thank you for continuing to give through the mail, ACH, and online giving and keeping us financially afloat. Uh, I just can't even begin to thank you enough uh, that the, for, for your generosity and for truly stepping up to the plate. Immediately after this Mass, I will be at 88.1 radio playing some more songs and ministering until 10 o'clock. Um, I would like you to pray the Our Father, especially those who are out, and the live streaming will stop at the end of Mass, but those who are on the radio, I'd like you to slowly play the Our Father while I make it to my station to continue the radio program. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a wonderful, relaxing day. And remember the task, my God and my all. Just repeat that gently for about 15 minutes or however long or short you want to. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign.